The NEC former contract has this idea or concept of the project manager accepting documents, whether it's design or programs, from the contractor. But the question that I often get asked is, is acceptance different from approval? And in any, in any event, what does acceptance of a program or acceptance of a design really mean? My understanding of how, the way the NEC works is the acceptance is acceptance of delivery of something which is complying with the contract mechanism, i.e. the contractor's got an obligation to produce a program or to produce a design. But the acceptance isn't the acceptance of the detail of that design or program. So there's no transfer of liability in a contractual sense through that acceptance procedure. However, I think one of the problems that a lot of contractors face is abuse of that acceptance process or a misunderstanding, whether on the side of the uh, contractor or on side of the project manager, not really understanding that it's a, a process mechanism rather than a design sort of fundamental acceptance. Yes, yes, it works, and therefore I'm taking on some design liability or, or programming liability for where the where the end date now is. Is there something that we should be doing to to make that clearer, or do you think the words acceptance are clear, Ian? Well, I think you've got the words acceptance, but you've also then got the provision in the contract that makes it clear that if the project manager or the supervisor accepts something from the contractor, it doesn't remove their liability. So that reinforces the concept this is a contractual acceptance. As you've already said, that yes, that's compliant with the contract in terms of you had to produce a program, it's been produced, it complies with the requirements, it's been accepted. That doesn't mean that program is correct and the contractor is going to build exactly to that program. Things will vary, things will flex. In the same way, design can be accepted you can now start to construct it, but in no way is that saying that the design will stand up. It's actually going to be fit for purpose in that sense. I think one of the things around this, this acceptance process is the, 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 the misunderstanding of how it works, and it being a process-driven one. Um, I often see project managers going back perhaps many months after an acceptance and trying to unaccept something that they've previously dealt with. I'm not sure why they would want to put their mind back through so much history, but it, but it does in fact happen. My view is I don't, I don't think it's very healthy for the project, and it doesn't sit comfortably within the process. John, John, how would you deal with that? Well, I think, that, I think it, it, it's, it's, it's actually a part of education. It is, if, if you're talking about general project managers, duties, etc., and there's a project manager in the room when I'm doing training, I point at that clause, I, can't remember, I can never remember whether it's 14.1 or 14.2, but I point it and say, be aware of this, acceptance does not transfer liability. It's a chance for you to comment on it, and you might say to the contractor, I'm not accepting it because of this, or you might look at it and go, actually, I don't think that design is going to stand up, and you don't want to build a building which is going to fall down, so I'd have another look at it, um, and really hammer that home. In terms of going back and looking at its stuff three months you know, after the event, well, as you say, what's the point in that? It's happened. I think one of, one of the areas, so I think from my perspective, design is a reasonably easy gift and project managers will take the an understanding of not taking on a design liability. However, try and convert that across to understanding that they don't take responsibility for an end date in accepting a programme and just ensuring that they do accept a programme is, is really hard. And I think it's one of the fundamental challenges for the, for the NEC. Uh, Ewan, have you got any thoughts on, on that process? Plenty. Uh, uh, the accepted programme is, is at the heart of the uh, NEC form of contract and um, I, I see abuse uh, of, of, uh, not, of not accepting the programme all the time. It's often said, ah, oh, there are four reasons for not um, accepting the programme and, and therefore we've given a reason. But actually, if you look at those reasons, they're very wide uh, in terms of the programme needs to be realistic and capable of achievement, so you can quickly undermine the programme if you want to. But I think it's essential, just picking up on Ian's point, Clause 14, the uh, acceptance does not mean acceptance of liability, will help the acceptance of the programme. And when people realise that having an accepted programme in place is for the benefit of the project, for both parties, that will be helpful. That said, I would give one caveat, uh, which is 
delay is still measured in accordance uh, or, or by reference to the accepted program and where planned completion is. So when you have accepted that and planned completion is shown on that date, that is quite relevant to measuring delay. Yeah, you are accepting that date. So there is something you will accept in the program if you accept it with planned completion on a varied date. That new date that you accept is the date going forward. Just picking up on one point that you said about these high-level reasons for non-acceptance, which can apply to an awful lot of communications. One thing I would like to see in the next edition, NEC4, is actually state the contractual reason and give details. Just to, because you do get some project managers who say, well, it's not practicable. <laughs> yeah, the whole program. Well, give us, throw the dog a bone. Where? What can I do to improve it, to get it accepted? Um, and I think that would be a good, a good addition to the fourth edition. I'd agree. I think just sort of summarising where that conversation's got to, I think acceptance is uh, a relatively easy concept when, when you're in the sort of ivory tower of you know, not living a project day to day and getting involved in the minutiae of the, of the detail. And you do have to sort of pull yourself back out of the detail and understand that it's a, a procedural step. However, I think John's point at the end there is absolutely right, that the, the, the flip side of acceptance is non-acceptance. And if you're not going to accept, actually you need to be explaining why you're not accepting. And if you're not getting that level of detail, there's again, there's probably some relationship problem fundamental in the project team that you need to be looking at and dealing with because there's no reason for not giving that information out. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.